Good morning, folks. Pops and I are here again, day four in the Porkies. If you saw our fishing video from earlier, this is gonna be kind of along the same lines, but just different content than what you're used to seeing here on the, on the channel. Doing all the fishing was fun, but the majority of our trip was hiking and camping. And we got a lot of really cool footage, and I kinda wanna share that here with you guys now and just kinda review everything that we did and everything that we saw while we were backpacking through the Porkies. So, to start things off, you know, first day out on the trail, rain. It was rainy, it was cold. It was a pretty tough, tough day, all things considered. When we actually got out onto the trail, the trail was really muddy and, you know, we were having to zigzag to try and avoid these big mud potholes that were just, you know, you take a wrong step and you're going six to eight inches through mud, through water, soaking your boots. And that is, that's not what you want to do first day on the, on the camp. So with the haze, we really couldn't see Mirror Lake. We couldn't really see Lake of the Clouds. And we hiked past both of those on our first day. Towards the end of the day, we were just barely hanging on. I think we got a little over enthusiastic on the first day, getting out, going too fast. So we, we kind of burned our burned our energy too too soon, but we somehow managed to make it to camp. Alrighty folks, we have finally made it. You can see down there, that is a little carp creek. Well Pops and I, we've been hiking, 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 and it is so nice to see the camp, and we need to do a couple quick things before we can go out and get to fishing. Yeah, that's kind of where we both went into camp mode and, and kind of grabbed different roles depending on you know what we were doing. Yeah. Even though it's been just downpouring all morning and into the afternoon, Pops and I have still managed to get a decent amount of wood. He's still collecting. I think we're gonna light this sucker up here soon and uh, maybe get to dinner. I wouldn't say against all odds, but against a lot of wet odds. <laughs> we got a fire going. Now it's time for Camp Chef Mike to cook up some freeze-dried, freeze-dried something. As the fire is ripping, we got the jet boil ripping, Mashed potatoes on the way, instant, nothing but the best. And then we've got our freeze-dried Italian pepper steaks. That's gonna be good, so yeah. A few more minutes and we'll be chomping down. Mwah. We are done. That is the nastiest looking throw up plate you've ever seen, but that is gonna taste so freaking good. Get into our bellies, what do you think? It's awesome. Here we Could go. Be after the hike, after the rain, after the food and gathering all that wood, we we did a Sleeping Beauty slumber for like, it was like a 12 hour yeah, night. We I mean, were, it was- We were in a trance. It was unreal. I wake up and check my phone, I'm like, oh crap, we need to get going. Alrighty folks, it is all puffy eyes this morning. Pops and I slept in mega mega, so we're getting coffee going and we're gonna start deconstructing the camp and yeah, get on the trail. We're a little late, but Nothing wrong with an extra couple weeks of sleep after a day like yesterday. Yep. Campsite is clean, just like we left it. The bags of death are about to go back on the back. And yeah, it's time to go hike to our next spot and hopefully find some fish. We made our way down the Little Carp Trail, following the river damn near the whole time. Yep. We would depart every now and again, but we got to really see the environment change from, like he said, woodland, small brook, to river, bluffs and then eventually Lake Superior. Yeah. I mean when we eventually crawled hand on foot. Sweet salvation we've made it to LC12. It has been a hike from hell. Holy cow. And just like that we are back. The little carp has kicked our teeth in yet again so it is time to make a fire cook some dinner, and warm up before we head to slumber land. Because <laughs> we got another long day ahead of us tomorrow. So let's get, let's get after it. What do we got? What's on the chef's menu tonight? We have bacon, instant potatoes, and red beans and rice, <laughs> and a little coffee. So if they couldn't smell us before, they're definitely gonna smell us now. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about bears. <laughs> had enough time after dinner to really slow down and go watch the sunset on Lake Superior. That was one of the coolest parts of this trip, just sitting there 
and watching the expanse of this just giant body of water, sun dropping all the way to the horizon. It was. You had a great rock to sit on. Oh and, my gosh, and, uh, everything about it. And it wasn't cold. It, nope. was, it was perfect enough to where we could sit there and enjoy it to its fullest. It really wasn't windy either. No. Um, the waves were coming in pretty good, but yeah. it wasn't windy. Alrighty folks, after the day we've had, we're gonna let this fire burn out, head to bed, and get ready for another long hike tomorrow. Thanks for sticking with. Alrighty folks, whole puffy eyes and pops are back on the trail. Packed up camp, kinda got everything situated. Back on the backs, and we've got one more hike. Seven miles to go to our last campsite. Hopefully we can find some fish in between, but if not, whew, just getting there will be an accomplishment. So let's take yep. it easy, but get after it. So day three on the trail, this was this was probably the coolest, at least visual changes like that you could actually see because we started on the Lake Superior coast. We worked our way up the Big Carp River, going through the woodlands, and then our trail ended on this amazing windswept bluff. It was so freaking amazing. But overall, I would say the trail on day three, the, it was a gradual climb the whole way up because you're you're following the the, the trail and the, the river all the way up to the headwaters again. So we're going to be climbing and. Yeah. You know, we kind of had to make some sacrifices. We had to carry a little bit extra weight because there's no water. We're, we're camping right now on the bluff and there's no water up here. So we had to carry a little bit extra weight and it, it made it tough. It was, a, it was a tough yeah. last hike, but we managed to get to our last campsite, which we're at right now. Yeah. And yeah, we jumped into our rolls, just like I grabbed the bear bag, you grabbed the tent, we just kind of Going into robot mode, we knew what we needed to do. Yeah, and it really, you know, um, recapping again, you know, the, the first night was woodlands mm -hmm. and the brook. Second night was coastline and, and the waves. waves. And um, the, the third night really was, I mean, what do you think? 50, 50 yards that way yeah. is um, a 400 foot cliff. And the wind comes in, hits that cliff and goes straight up. And if you're standing out there, it, it's like 60 miles an hour but it kicks it above the tree canopy that we're in. So where we're camping- It's like there, completely protected. There's no wind. It's, this is, if, if you're coming to the Porcupine Mountains, get campsite, uh, Big Carp 2. That's where we're at right now. Yeah. It is the coolest freaking camps. It's like Narnia, you're like protected by a magical dome where the wind just goes right over. It's, you're, you're getting you know kicked in the back with the wind about 50 miles an hour and about 25 steps into it all it of a sudden stops. stops it's it's so cool but yeah we spent we spent the majority of our evening after dinner uh, it, dinner was okay we'll put some footage in here now third night camp chef mike coming in hot with a little unorthodox mixture but what do we got four cheese mashed potatoes and pad thai chicken oh man talk about stomach ache central calories here we come do you like this kind of cuisine and that took no time at all to get clean play club status. That was so good. After our pad thai chicken, we set out on that windswept bluff and just drank a little Elijah Craig and watched this beautiful sunset as the, you know, these sweeping ridges. I mean, that, that view is something I'll never forget, which is kind of really cool. You know, we got to see Lake Superior and this amazing event. And then last night getting to see this just huge valley. I mean, like nothing. It, it, it's no. just different. It's yeah, just and different. where we're sitting on these bluffs over here, you can see Lake, Lake, of, the Lake of the Clouds to your left, and then 12, 15 miles down the valley, you can just get a yeah. peak of, of Lake Superior still. So, so really, we could almost visualize our entire route around the Porkies, which is just, yeah, gosh, it was so cool. So that kind of brings us to right now, day four. Tears of joy, we're gonna be going home soon, packing up camp and getting a shower and getting a beer. <laughs> Amen. Because <laughs> it has been a grind. But, you know, whenever you're coming to a new place like this, do your research. You know, there's, there's some different regulations that you have to follow up here in the Upper Peninsula and in the state park that we're in right now. But it's well worth it. Get out here, come see the beauty that is the Porkies. This was a trip that I'll probably never forget. I don't think yeah. you'll ever forget. For the goods and the bads, this is this was such a cool, cool trip. So, whenever you're coming to the Porkies, make sure to keep your boots on the trail. Until next time, safe travels.